Hi there, it's Mark Keto Fitness. So, we've got a surprise for you. It's Christmas. I mean, we filmed this at Christmas, but we just forgot to release it. So, Christmas chocolate log. Which, let's face it, you can make it into an Easter chocolate log. So, hope you enjoy the recipe. Uh, we made this at the weekend, and it makes sort of like four smallish portions, or three sort of, you know, normal size portions. You obviously want it as a rectangle, so you can roll it. So anyway, the, the, the making is so easy. Um, and it's the usual set of ingredients, eggs, coconut flour, ground almonds, cocoa. This one's got psyllium husk in it as well. Oh wow, got a feather on this one. <laughs> so it's this and sweetener. Um, I think I only used 30 grams last time. I used the electric whisk last time, but you know, it doesn't really add much to it. it, it Potentially you might get it a bit more aerated, but not much. Cocoa powder, 10 grams. Coconut flour, 15 grams. Brown almonds, 25 grams. Obviously if you've got a bigger sort of baking tray, then you just double this recipe up. But it smells amazing already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and psyllium husk, just four grams, about a teaspoon. And half a teaspoon of baking powder. Half a teaspoon. So, along with any other sort of ingredient that uses cocoa powder, don't go at it crazy because you just have a, a cloud of cocoa powder. Uh, once it's all mixed in, it's easier to just get into a smooth paste. I don't tend to sieve the coconut flour, but this one has got a few lumps in it, so I am just going to press them out. And it will, because of the uh, psyllium husk, it will start to go a little bit thicker as well. So not thick like one of the breads, but it's, it actually sort of got some um, consistency to it. With the tray, I've lined it, um, and there's a little edge on the sides as well as obviously a lip on the on the either end. Because the idea is, is when this comes out of the oven, you're going to roll it straight away and use the, keep the paper on it and roll it all the way in the paper. Which means that when it cools down, you can fill it, and it's basically, it'll hold its shape. So it is quite thin on the, on the tray. So you will need to sort of spread it around a little bit. Imagine a chocolate orange swirl. <laughs> I thought exactly the same today, actually. I was going to try and pick up some orange essence and then completely forgot. So I've just gently eased that out into the corners. Yep. So I won't tip this too much, but you can see it there. So it's, it, it is very thin. Um, this tray is barely sort of covering the tip of the uh, of the spoon. Um, it will rise. It will take about ten minutes in the oven. Um, at around about sort of 160, 170. Don't overcook it. Real simple. Don't In fact, overcook. ours was overcooked ours a little bit. Last by time. about two minutes. Yeah. Um, the longer it's cooked, the more difficult it's going to be to roll. And as if by magic, uh, 10 minutes later, and it literally was 10 minutes, it's out and it's firm and it has risen just a little bit, which is, which is great, fabulous. Um, obviously, now the Fun bit. Firstly, let's get it out of the tray. In fact, it's just moved in the tray so I can lift it straight out. So in the paper and in the, the, the tea towel, because it's obviously quite hot to handle because it's literally just come out, we're going to roll it. Don't be afraid. It, it probably may crack a little bit, but it won't. It shouldn't split all the way open. So just get, you'll be surprised as to how flexible this is. is hot so but once you get it going there we go you can see it's rolled just gonna get that bit rolled over properly there and then roll it in the cloth like that and then leave it alone we're going to have to sort of let that cool down for a half hour, hour, um, because the next time we sort of handle it, we're going to be filling it with cream and potentially putting chocolate on top of it. 
it's cooled down and look at it perfectly rolled um, so this is the point at which <clears throat> again being brave we're going to unroll it a little bit and we're going to fill it I'm going to whip the cream um, and then we can fill it we used 60 grams last time didn't we to fill it we used 100 but we didn't use it all so I'm going to go with yeah. 60 yeah mm -hmm. obviously you can put a lot of cream inside this if you want. I did think about making um, uh, a cherry jam. Now, the only jam I've got in there is that cranberry and raspberry. Potentially. Yeah? Mm hmm Okay. 60 grams of this. Uh, I might have used a, a bowl that's a little bit too big. but Do 100 and then we don't, okay, don't I'll, use I'll it. Okay, I'll do all. 100, yeah. I'm going to whip 100 grams of cream. Put the protein powder in but first. But it isn't going it... to need 100 grams of cream to fill that. Vanilla, yeah? Yeah. So we did this last time. We added a little bit of vanilla protein powder into the mix. Um, Mainly because we didn't have vanilla essence. Oh, and we still don't because I didn't get any. Yeah. Um, 10 grams. Uh, yeah, go with that. And then mix it in before you whip it because yeah. it, it almost acts like cocoa powder. Yes, yeah, and I get it. It will sort of go thick on straight away. Yeah, that'll do. Beautiful. I made some cranberry jelly at the weekend and that worked really, really well. Um, and then I thought we didn't have any jam. Um, in fact, it's the same thing, isn't it? Um, but I've made this as a cranberry and raspberry jam. I'm going to put it in the cake. Um, you, so you can make a raspberry jam or a strawberry jam or a, whatever you want to sort of go in here. Again, don't be afraid that it, it potentially will, like here, you can't put, potentially, you can't see it, but it is trying to crack. It doesn't matter. Absolutely doesn't matter. Especially on that bit, because that's Even if one. it does split completely, the cream on, that's going to go on the inside is going to hold it together, and then the chocolate on the outside is going to cover over any, any, any splits. So, well, as you can see, it's, it's, it is fairly flexible. Right. And then just re-roll it. Oh yeah. So now, got that? I'm tempted to stick it on that side. Yeah, no I would because otherwise the chocolate will look funny. Right, there you go. okay. So I've actually rolled it onto the seam. So the, the, cre the chocolate cream that goes on top of the chocolate ganache, Ooh, that's very good. it's sort of Fudgy, um, but will sort of set as well. It won't go crispy, it won't go crunchy, um, but it will set. Um, now, I haven't made this before. This is usually Louis' speciality. So I've just had to sort of go and ask him how to make it. So he says, heat the cream for 30 seconds. So, 100 grams of cream, which I've heated for 30 seconds to get it nice and warm. Breaking the chocolate in to melt it down. And then we're going to pop it back in the microwave and heat it again. Now, when this is uh, heated again, it'll be a bit too runny to go straight on here. We're going to let this cool down a little bit and then I'm just going to spoon it over the top of the chocolate log and it will sort of dribble down the sides and dribble down the edge and job is good. You can probably see the chocolate is melting. Um, it sort of goes a little bit grey. I'm going to pop it back in the microwave because I want you to sort of see what it looks like. Oh, a little bit of sweetener. Just 10 grams of sweetener. I'm going to give that another 30 seconds. So I can see that it was bubbling just a little bit in the microwave, so it's there. Just a little bit in the microwave. Um, you don't need to sort of cook too much, but you can see now, as I'm stirring it, I can see it in the camera, darker darker. It's, it's going darker and darker. Leave it for sort of half an hour or so. Maybe not that long. Louis left it for like 10-15 minutes. Right, 10-15 minutes. And it will start to sort of go thick again. 